Hey guys, Sheree here from Sheree's Alchemy. Welcome back to my channel. I'm back again today with another haul. This time, a pattern haul. Um, several weeks ago, I was able to pick up a bunch of patterns that I've been wanting um, from Vogue, McCall's, Butterick, and Quick Sew. Um, I got them online from somethingdelightful.com, which now owns uh, these pattern companies. And I haven't been out into the stores to look for patterns and look through pattern books in, the, in months. Um, and so I've just been kind of keeping a running list, actually a running cart. Um, and I've been waiting for a sale to pop up and I was excited to get the email. Um, most of these, I think all of them, including the Vogue actually this time, they were $3.19 each, which, you know, sometimes you can get them in the stores for $1.99, the Butterick, McCall's, Quick Sell. Vogue is usually $4.99 a yard, $5.99 a yard. So on average, I felt like this was just a phenomenal deal. And I'm excited to have finally have these patterns in my stash. Um, as they'll be a part of some upcoming sewing collections and sewing challenges on Instagram that I'll be doing. So I'm not going to show you everything because it's a lot. Um, so what I did was I went through the different categories of patterns that I bought and I pulled out some of my favorite ones that I want to sew up first. And that's what I'm going to show with you. First, let's start with some pants. Um, I'm finally at a point where... I want to add some pants uh, to my handmade wardrobe. I have a lot of really great ready-to-wear pants. Um, I'm kind of particular about my pants. I'm not big on like elastic waist. Like I like really tailored um, trousers on really great breathable fabrics. Um, so I do have some ready-to-wear ones that I really love. But I do want to make some for spring and summer. Um, some new fabrics in my stash um, well they're not new they're in my stash and I need to sew up my stash so uh, particularly some uh, twills and sateens and linens that I have uh, I really want to get those sewn up so the first pattern I'm going to show you is from Vogue this is Vogue 9181 and these are this is the kind of pant I like to wear just very flat front no zippers, um, bulky zippers and buttons and stuff right at the front because I don't want to add any more bulk to that area. Um, and they're slightly flared, which is flattering on um, my figure. Um, they do have a front uh, zip blanket, but it's like very flat. It doesn't have buttons. It's just a zipper and it has a waistband. Um, so I'm looking forward to sewing those up. This custom couture collection pattern, I'm really excited to try. I'm probably gonna start with this one because I really wanna master the fit. And this is a pant style that I really, really love. Like this is the kind of style that I buy and ready to wear. So I'm excited about that one. So this is Vogue 7881. And then here are the line drawings in the back. You can see that. And this is a part of the Claire Schaefer's uh, Custom Couture Collection. The next one up is um, these pl uh, Palmer Pletch patterns. Again, I think this will be a great one to kind of master fit with. It has a couple options. I don't really wear shorts, um, so I'll probably make views B and C the long pants some scallop details and things like that which you know I don't think I would use in the ties um, but I'm hoping that's a good base pattern and then here's the fourth one also from Vogue this is Vogue 9155 so here's what the back looks like again just a simple more straight leg pants um, it has two different kinds of front pockets that you can put on I might leave those off I'm not sure um, but I am looking forward to trying that. Okay, next I'm going to move on to some tops. Um, I picked up a lot of top patterns because I am trying to sew 
more separate so I can mix and match to create more outfits. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a sucker for anything that's a wrap, a wrap dress, wrap top, wrap jacket. So um, I picked up this wrap top from Butterick. This is Butterick 6767. And I like all the views. I actually really like the ruffle front. Also, I think that's really feminine looking. Um, this is going to work with a lot of the fabrics in my stash from Georgettes to lawns to cottons to crepes. Um, so many wovens. So a lot of the wrap patterns that I have are made for knits. So I was excited to pick this one up because this one is for specifically for woven fabrics. And it has, um, it looks like some button detail that'll probably help keep that closed in the front. Um, but I would make all these views. I would make all of them. The next one is just a simple top. I really like the shell, which is view A. That's probably the one that I'll make because I like these kind of shells uh, to wear in the summertime. Um, I live in Minnesota, so you know the evenings sometimes cool off, but the daytime can be quite hot. So I like these kind of shells to wear during the day and then I can just throw a jacket or a cardigan on as the temperature cools. Um, this is also for wovens, gauzes, georgettes, chalets, things like that. And this is M7324 from McCall's. And then the back is just a plain, plain back. I love this Butterick pattern. Um, I had this in my cart for a while and, I, and you know, I don't even know how I didn't have this pattern before because I love it. Um, this is B6378. It's also an easy pattern, pullover tops or tunics. Again, I would make every single view on this pattern. I love it. I especially love the one with the tie in the front view B. That's probably going to be the one that I make first. And I like the sleeve length, you know, I do a lot of stuff at home. I'm always busy. And so I like a slightly cropped and elasticated sleeve cuff um, because I just feel like, you know, you still get a, like a pretty sleeve, but it's more practical than ones that are open and can get stuck on things. Here's another really cute one, kind of similar. The only one I wouldn't make is UD with those ties. Again, I don't like kind of fussy stuff like that. I feel like uh, view A with the wider opening um, is short enough that that is like a practical uh, wide sleeve to me. This is Butterick 6632. Again, also for uh, woven fabrics. I bet you can make these with a stable knit as well. Um, but your cotton blends, your chalets, your Georgette, things like that. And I don't know if I said, but this is Butterick 6632. Next one, I bought this for the neckline. I just think that is such a pretty neckline. Um, this is a very flattering neckline on me. I like that it's kind of a peasant blouse, but kind of more dressed up. This is Butterick 6711. And again, I would make every view, except for view C, I would leave those ties off. I would just put that cuff band and leave the ties off. Here's what the... Um, line drawing looks like on the back. Another McCall's one. I would make all these views again. I mean, this is just a really great practical top. I love that it doesn't have a lot of seaming in it. So this is a great one to use for those gorgeous prints that you might have. And you know, you don't want to like chop it all up and, and break up the print. So I could see you using a lot of those kinds of gorgeous prints. This is also for woven fabrics, for cotton lawns, uh, shamus, crepes, things like that. This is McCall 7899. And then here's a quick peek at the back. I also really love a raglan sleeve like that. That's just more flattering on me. Uh, drop sleeves just, I have like funky slope uh, shoulders. And so I, I like a sleeve like that. And then my favorite, favorite, favorite shirt one that I picked up. This is good. 
this is will need to be one of the first ones I sew just because it's long sleeve and I want to get that in to have for spring. Sorry for the glare there. I'm trying to do it the right way. But this is Vogue 1769. This was in their newest collection. And I mean, just what is there not to love about that? I love both views. Um, again, this is for woven fabrics, crepes, rayons, cotton shirting. It's just gorgeous. And the line drawings. That tie around the neck, that bow is actually separate, a separate sash. It's not attached to the shirt, so you can wear that shirt with or without that extra bow. But it's beautiful. Okay. Now let's do quickly some jackets. I'm not going to do as many of these as I thought. Um, let's start with this one. Look how cute. Look how cute that is. I love all the views. That's just a very flattering silhouette for like everybody, right? That's my call 7848. And, um, this is one that's in an extended sizing. Um, so I think I need to make that 18 on there. So I went on and picked that up. I'll probably cut it a little bit bigger or do, um, well, I'll just measure it and see. Um, but that was nice to see that this one had that extended sizing in this pattern. Cause this is just really, that's a flattering coat for pretty much everybody. And it calls for, um, it calls for wool blends, wool brocade, tweed, but I don't know. I could almost see this also like in a twill or like a really crisp linen. Um, you know, if you did UD with the zipper up the front and had that as like a jazzy spring coat, I think that would be fabulous. This is one of their newest, newer McCall's patterns where they're using the hashtag so on social media, this is hashtag Kayla McCalls. And again, it's 7848. This one, I'm thinking about making view A. I don't know. I love it, but I don't know how oversized it's going to be. But I feel like, again, I would almost make this and wear it as a robe around the house, honestly, as like elevated loungewear. I don't know if I would wear that out. I feel like it's like too voluminous for me. Um, but I do love it. It's an easy pattern, very loose fitting. Um, wovens, wools, linen blends, things like that. I mean, it's jazzy, you know, it's a jazzy pattern. Um, it has some cool details. Actually, I'm looking at the back. I need to show you the back. It has some cool details actually on the back of the pattern. You see how that's gathered and sloped in the back? But I think it's really pretty. Um, and with the right fabric, like it could be a real statement piece. This is Vogue 1756. So I saw this pattern online and it was my favorite from the McCall's winter collection. And like, I was tempted to buy this not on sale, but it's like, I know it's like, okay, it's that time. They're gonna have a sale at some point. And I would have gone into the store <laughs> to get this if that online sale hadn't happened. Um, I don't think I would ever make the vest, but this coat I can see making multiple times. And let me go in close so you can see. Look at the fabric. Love that fabric. And I actually found the fabric online and I was about to buy it. But I was so nervous because it actually doesn't look like this online. The colors look much darker and like I want it to look exactly like this. So I ordered a swatch and then we'll see when it comes in outside if I'm going to use it or not. But I have a lot of wool in my stash, actually even some plaids that I could use for this. So this is Vogue 1758. It's labeled as average. Um, and again, it's obviously for wools. Um, it's lined. And it also says that you could use gabardine and crepe for this. So that would, oh no, that's for the pants. Okay, I was going to say, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah. you want to have the wools and things like that for this. Oh, look, I just, I just love that. I think that's jazzy. Okay. Let me 
see if there are any more coat jackets that stick out. Oh, this one. Yeah, I'm going to show these. I'm going to show two more. Look at this. I got some faux leather from Move Fabrics. And I think that, that I'm going to use that fabric and try and make this jacket. I love Anne Klein. I actually love these like jegging pants. You could make those with a full leather also. Um, but I think this is just a really cute basic jacket. This is considered to be average. It's calling for synthetic leathers, wool crepe, medium weight denim, and the pants need fabric with moderate stretch, ponties, wool jerseys, things like that. I just think that's like a really cute, understated, classy look. And I don't know if I said the number, that's Vogue. That's Vogue 1517. And then the final one, I love a peplum. I love a peplum. This is super cute. Again, I actually like all the views on this one. Let me come in close. This is McCall's 7513. Look at view A. Look at that peplum on the back of view A. Love. Let me show you the back. I mean, this is just cute. I have some brocades uh, in my stash that I think would be really cute sewn up in this. This is McCall 7513. And um, yeah, it's calling for brocades, wool blends, baby cord, velveteen. It's lined. It has six buttons. I just feel like it would be a very, again, a flattering silhouette on most everyone. And um, McCall 7513. And again, this is a newer one. So on social media, you would look up Lexi, hashtag Lexi McCall's. To see people's makes on that. Love it. Okay, so that's the last of the jackets that I'll show you because I have two more piles. Next, I always love a pattern, you know, the little collections where you get like three or four different um, items on a pattern. Those are great deals. And especially if you're trying to sew separates to mix and match. It's just very practical. I mean, they've already done it for you before, but you know, again, if you just like the jacket, I mean, you're paying, I paid $3.19 for the pattern. So for a jacket pattern, that's a great price. But this I love. I'm liking b and I feel like the fabric and the styling of the jacket with the skirt just looks a little, I don't know, not flattering. But again, I, I wouldn't color block it like that, but I like the overall fit and look of the jacket and the pants together. So that's what I'm thinking about making. This is one of those like, is meant to be a quilted jacket, um, which is very trendy right now. So here's what the line drawing looks like. But I feel like those pants are super cute. And I love that, you know, quilted puffer jacket kind of look for spring. This is Vogue 1757, and it's marked as advanced. I'm pretty sure because of the quilting. I'm a quilter. That's not a big deal for me. Um, I don't know how the sizing is, but it's probably like if you just want the structure of the jacket, I'm sure you could just sew it up and line it and not quilt it. Um, but I think that's why it's labeled advanced. That's the, otherwise, it's just a pleated skirt with an elastic waist. And, you know, if you know how to make pants and put in a zipper, then you can do that. Um, so I'm looking forward to making this. Again, Vogue 17, Vogue, glare, Vogue 1757. Okay. Did I show the back? I think so. So I love that. And then these are those Vogue wardrobe. Well, no, this one is just a three-piece suit set. I just love the classic simplicity of that. Vogue 9336. I would make all those pieces. In fact, I think I'm going to use this pattern for an upcoming collection that I'm working on. Um, you use your typical suiting fabrics, crepes, wool flannel, men's suiting. 
I love that. I love the cut of the blazer where it's like you don't really need a blouse underneath. You could just wear like a beautiful camisole, maybe with a little bit of lace or something or just a contrasting color peeking through. But it's just a flattering, gourd skirt. And the pants, this is actually my favorite style of pant where the zipper is on the side and not in the front. You know, adding like that always, like it never really lays flat, right? But I love it when the zipper is on the side because you can get that front like really nice and flat and it's just more flattering to me but I love everything about this there's the line drawing okay and again this is an, this is an easy pattern and it's Vogue 9336 and then this next these two are the Vogue wardrobe collections and this is, like I said, I mean, you make this whole thing, you have like a little mini capsule wardrobe. This is 9215. And I would make all of those pieces. Like everything here I would wear. They would mix and match beautifully. I love it in the black and white and gray like that. But it would be also fun to add in, you know, a solid with some prints right this is also an easy pattern I'm bringing it in so you can see the line drawings really cute so this calls for moderate stretch knits uh wool jerseys ponties stretch leather so again this would be like a, just a really classy but comfortable work from home look cute when you run errands Capsule wardrobe. Love that. Vogue 9215. And then the final wardrobe collection. Again, I would make every piece. I will make every piece. I love this. Simple classic lines. Looks great in solids. You can mix in some prints. You're getting here a jacket in two lengths. Wide leg pants, straight leg pants, and a dress. So one, two, three, four. You're getting six different items in this one pattern that I got for $3.19. That's a deal. It's a Vogue Easy. It's calling for crepes, linen, even ponty. So those stable knits work as well. Wool flannels. You know... I mean, this was just like a no-brainer. And again, I don't know how I missed that because it's not a new pattern. Vogue 9176. Okay, the final category. My most favorite thing to make, dresses. This actually, I love that dress. And for vacation, I would make it that short. In my real life, I wouldn't wear it that short. Y'all, I'm almost 50. My daughter, <laughs> my daughter would be like, mom, what you doing? Uh, <laughs> but I love, I actually would make the shorts and the t-shirt as like a little at-home summer lounge set. Or again, like on vacation, I would wear it. But this is just cute. This is McCall's 8160. Let me show you line drawings. You know, very basic, very easy. This is one of those ones where you just pick the right fabric to elevate the look, right? Um, so this calls for cotton flannels. See, I was on the right track with that like loungy set, right? Uh, cotton knits and cotton blends. So you can use this for knits and wovens. And this is one of those patterns that go from an extra small, which they say is a four to six, up to an XXL, which is a 2426. And it's generously sized. I mean, that extra large, what is that giving you on the finished? Oh yeah. See, this is one of those generously cut patterns. The XXL, the bust on that, the finished garment bust, is supposed to be 57 and a half inches. And the hip, which is usually what I have to go by. Oh yeah, very generous. The hip measurements are between 58, 
for the shorts and 56 and a half for they have a slimmer so they have shorts in two styles they have a wider more loose short and then a more straight short i mean that's pretty inclusive that would probably be equivalent to like a 2x in the stores i think yeah this is very generous and the waist i mean it's good so I think that's a fun one for most people, right? It does look like, you know, it looks very, like it's very straight. Like the dress is very straight on the front. But you can see from the line drawing that it does have a little bit of like flow and ease and give. Especially if you, like if you make this in a cotton knit. Um, I mean, it's a t-shirt dress. Cute. So again, this is McCall's 8160. And what are they calling this one? They're calling this hashtag Agnes McCalls on social media. If you want to check that out. Cute, cute. Dress number one. Dress number two. This is so cute. This is like, I love this for coming up in summer. I love a dress like this. It's like an elevated tank dress, right? I love the woven. I love the buttons. And very easy to throw a jacket or cardigan on top of this to like, make it look a little bit more dressy but like i would live in this dress in the summer. this is my kind of dress um this is mccall 7944 and again this one what did i get okay i got the extended size so i got the one for women because my issue is my hips like i'm like hourglassish, um and so i need to make sure that the pattern will cover my hip range and then I can always grade down for the top. And so, um, again, this is one that goes from like a size eight up to a size 24 W. So good range in here. Um, again, calling for wovens. But I would make this in a stable knit. I think that would be very cute and comfortable. So I'm probably going to try that for sure. It has a couple different hemlines that you could try. I'm not a big high-low person, but honestly, in a black linen, that high-low might be cute. Yeah, I'm loving this. Yeah, fabric, suggested fabrics are linen, crepe, gauze, lightweight denim. Um, the other good thing about this one, this one is not, you know, it's a cute dress that doesn't hog up a lot of fabric. You know, for most of them, for 60 inches wide, for the largest size, you're using around three yards of fabric. So, and that's, you know, for the longer length. And so I like that. This is one of their Learn to Sew uh, beginner series patterns. I think this is the one where exactly you're learning how to basically top stitch and put on buttons on this. So if you're a beginner sewer, you know, like an advanced beginner, this would be a good one. When you've sewn your, you know, first few garments and you're ready to move up to doing buttonholes especially if your machine has buttonholes on it. Um, that could be a fun way to kind of elevate your skills. This is easy peasy though. Did I tell you the number? I can't remember. McCall 7944. Next, we have this jumpsuit. I don't wear jumpsuits, but somehow I want to make some jumpsuits. I think because we're home now, you know, I feel like, well, wearing a jumpsuit at home, I'm okay with that. But like wearing a jumpsuit out, I don't know. It's like a, it's like a whole thing for me. But I love that. I love um, View C with the straps. Um, That's probably the one I'm going to make. You know, a strapless one, View B is cute. I just don't know if I could pull that off. This is calling for Chino, Denim, Lennon, Twill. McCall's 8101. And this is another one they did in the women's sizing, which is what I got. And then the missus goes from an 8 to 16. But you can just, I mean, you can dress this up. Like, if you be the strapless, you can really, as, as it looks like she's pulling off, like a summer night out, like a summer date, you know, dress it up, put on some, some heels, some slingbacks. It'd be very cute. 
Oh, and I forgot this one uh, the ha on social media. It's Natalie McCall's hashtag Natalie McCall's. Okay, next another jumpsuit. Yes, I said I don't wear jumpsuits, but I'm gonna make some this year and just they'll be for at home. This is McCall's seven nine zero nine. Another newish one that they've rebranded with their hashtag. So on social media. This is Dow, hashtag Dahlia McCalls. And honestly, with this one, I mean, I like all the view. I would probably start with view A, the one that's modeled, because I think that's really cute. Um, this would be something I would wear on vacation, actually. And I can see myself hacking this into a dress. I think that would be cute. I would get more wear out of a dress for sure. But I like that. McCalls 7909. Two more. This is, I told you I love a wrap dress. And this is like just a really cute, very summery feeling one to me. This length I would wear on vacation. You know, typically in my normal life, I wear longer dresses than that. But on vacation, I like it short. <laughs> Especially vacation, you know, in Jamaica. <laughs> I like it short. And I would probably, you know, do that sleeveless and that short length. And that would be nice. So this is a Nancy Zeman pattern. Ooh, God rest her soul. Um, McCall 7893. I actually met her once at Quilt Market. She came to my booth. Um, and what a lovely person she was. She loved, I had the intention of releasing some children's clothing patterns. And so I had sewn up all the stuff. And I had sewn some really adorable things for some fabric companies. And while I was still setting up, she was walking the halls and she came through. And she was just taking pictures of all these things and told me about her granddaughter and how this is the kind of stuff, you know, she would love for her granddaughter. Um, really lovely lady. But anyway, um, I'm sorry, I just realized that this was her pattern. I didn't even see that when I bought it. But anyway, this is McCall 7893. And this one is for moderate stretch knits. You need at least 35% cross gain, cross grain. You need at least 35% cross gain, uh, grain stretch. So interlock cotton knits and jerseys are appropriate for this. And then I'll show you the back. So I like both of these views. I like the asymmetrical line, even though I'm usually not into that, I feel like on this length, that's actually really cute. Um, but of course, the straight one. And this is one that's so cute. You know, I would lengthen that for every day. I like how fitted it is. Like normally my wrap dresses are like, you know, with fuller skirts. So I, I like this one. And then <laughs> this is my second favorite pattern of the whole haul. Favorite dress. That coat is still my favorite. But look at this is gorgeous. I mean, again, look at that wrap dress. I hate that I can't get the glare off. Let me see if I can tilt it. It's so good. It's so good. This is Vogue 1762. In love. I love everything about this. Makes me want to play with some stripes. I can't, e I, like, I can't even wait. This is calling for... Um, wovens, chiffons, satins, georgettes, things like that. I mean, if you use a rayon or something like that, I, I can't imagine that that wouldn't work. That's probably what I'm going to use. But everything from the bishop sleeve with the buttons on the um, wristband, the contrast in the right places, I just love it. I'm just looking here. So for the size, I would probably have to make the 24. This is going to need under five yards. So four and three quarters for a 60 inch wide, which my rayons usually are. Um, if I had something that was 45 inches, it would need four and seven eighth yards of fabric. And then you have your contrast fabric up to another um, two and an eighth yards, um, 
if it's 45 inches, another one and five eighth yards if it's 60 inches wide. So, and it's lined. You need two, you need three to three and a half yards of lining. So this is a fabric hog. If I did this in a rayon, I would probably skip the lining. I mean, I'm sure there's some ways to get around so much fabric usage. Um, I love a pattern like this, but I feel like sometimes when it uses so much fabric, it's like a deterrent, right? It's just like, you know, all of a sudden you're using eight yards of fabric for a dress. Um, but I'm sure there's some ways around it. I'll look at the directions and see uh, what exactly is involved there. But I'm still going to make it for sure, even if I have to use all that, because I just think it's so elegant and beautiful. I'm sure because it's emphasizing those stripes, like changing the directions of the stripes, that's probably one of the reasons why it's calling for so much fabric. Um, So if you didn't go with stripes, just like a, you know, one directional print or something, you could probably eke out more. Maybe I'll do a review on this one when I make it and talk about, you know, what's involved. Because I do think it's just gorgeous. It would be gorgeous shorter, as gorgeous as the maxi. It's just pretty. So again, this is Vogue 1762. Second favorite from the haul. This coat pattern was my first favorite from the haul. This is my second favorite from the haul. This is my third favorite from the haul. But I love them all. I'll come back. As you can see, these are all, these are all patterns. There's probably like another 40 patterns here. Um, some are things that I plan to make for my husband and son and my daughter. Um, a couple accessory patterns. So I'm not going to go in, all into that. But if you see something you like here, you know, leave a comment below. Uh, let me know which patterns that you think you might pick up the next time you go pattern shopping. If you've sewn any of these patterns already and you have any feedback for us, again, please leave it in the comments below. And I especially would like to ask you guys if you um, are interested in more sewing content, pattern reviews. I might get to sew alongs at some point, but I'm kind of like, I'm like, I like to go into my zen when I'm sewing and just like focus. So I don't know about the whole like recording myself and talking while I sew, like. I usually have loud music on or I'm like watching other YouTubers or watching just some background show. Um, and it's like my quiet Zen time. So I don't know if I would like pull my, maybe if I pick certain things just to do a solo along, like to teach you guys something, maybe that. I, I, we'll see. But anyway, let me know in the comments below. Um, you know, what are your favorite patterns? What are you working on? Please subscribe to my channel. It's new. I don't have that many subscribers. I need some subscribers. Um, and if you like this kind of content, please hit the like button. Um, check me out on Instagram at Cherise Alchemy. I share a lot over there. Um, YouTube is new to me, um, but we're going to make it happen. You know, I'm still looking to learn how to edit videos and, and get all creative with things. But for now, I'm just going to come and I'm just going to talk and do these kind of like unedited videos for you guys. So I hope you don't mind that until I learned um, some more skills for this. So yeah, have a great day. And um, I'm looking forward to reading your comments and I'm looking forward to you guys subscribing so I can bring you more content. I'll be back. I have like a whole list of videos that I'm gonna be recording. So I'm looking forward to sharing with you guys and I'll be back soon. Bye-bye.